So a very warm welcome to everyone who has joined us today. I hope you and your families are in good health. My name is Rohan and I'll be your host for today's webinar. This webinar on integrating systems of records and collaboration tools is presented to you by Harbinger Systems. The duration for this webinar would be approximately 30 minutes. First 20 minutes are for the presentation and then we would utilize the last 10 minutes for questions. Before we begin, a few housekeeping tips. In case you cannot hear the audio, ensure you have selected the right speaker for audio output. You may test the same to see if it is working fine from the auto settings option on the lower left corner of your screen. If necessary, dial in using your phone. All attendees will be on mute by default. Please raise your hand if you have any query or post it in the chat window. Any questions can be posed during the Q&A panel. We will try and attend to all questions during the session. The ones that remain shall be answered via a follow-up email. A recording shall be made available to all attendees within a few days. And now it's time to introduce our speakers for the event. Our first speaker for today is Dr. Vikas Joshi. Dr. Vikas Joshi is a business leader who is passionate about product development and technology entrepreneurship. As founder and CEO at Harbinger Group, Vikas leads a reputed organization inspired by his passion for product development. He holds two U.S. patents for his inventions in interactive learning technology. As writer, speaker, and educator, Vikas shares his passion for tech entrepreneurship with others. Vikas is a Harvard Business School alum and also holds a doctorate from University of Pennsylvania. Our second speaker for today is Mahesh Kumar Karadi. Mahesh Kumar is a technology expert with over 13 years of experience in design and development of enterprise applications in the HR tech space. Mahesh specializes technology solutions for integration, artificial and business intelligence and cloud. He actively participates on the HR Open Standards Forum and contributes to HR.com research and webinars. At present, he heads the Center of Excellence for HR and learning technologies at Harbinger Systems. Welcome Vikas and Mahesh, the stage is all yours. Thank you, thank you very much Rohan for the introduction and just uh, wanted to make sure my voice is okay. Um, thank you. So uh, sure, I uh, welcome all of you and uh, uh, the basic premise of this short webinar is all HR technology, no matter if it's a suite or a point solution, must integrate well with collaboration tools. Now, uh, your question might be, why has this become such a big deal? And when did this become such a big deal? To answer the question, you have to only look around and ask, what has changed after the pandemic? And if you are an enterprise SaaS product manager, a CTO, or an engineering leader, you have noticed the tsunami of uh, collaboration tools that you find at the workplace. Uh, with remote work, tools like Zoom and WebEx and Microsoft Teams, Slack, Drive are deeply embedded into people interactions, especially in HR tech. Take the example of recruiting. Not too long ago, it used to be just a two-part process. The first part was the only virtual part where you did like a phone screening or you used a, a website to post jobs and collect resumes. And then everything else was pretty much face to face. You met the candidate, you negotiate an offer and so on. Not anymore. With remote work, the first time you will see your employee might be after they join if they're not working from home. Or take another example, and that's training, right? I mean, you know, even in a blended learning situation, it was pretty much a face-to-face -face training program with a small little online component. There might be a few resources or some simulations that would sit somewhere on the web, but the bulk of the program would be a face-to-face -face training program. Now, it's gonna be just the reverse. It's gonna be an online program with select face-to-face -face encounters 
for specific learning experiences. So this same disruption applies to onboarding, performance management, benefits, outplacement, a host of other parts of employee life cycle. Process after process is getting disrupted. And as a tech vendor, then you have to think in terms of remote onboarding, virtual classroom, online performance management, remote HR service delivery, and so on. Does your product roadmap account for virtual workers? Do you have integration strategies in place? Are you leveraging new marketplaces that are emerging around these collaboration tools? Those are some of the questions we're gonna answer. So to quickly come to our agenda today, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, my colleague Mahesh here is a tech expert. He has a ton of experience. He has designed and worked on dozens of enterprise SaaS products. So we're gonna pick Mahesh's brains and essentially learn four things. How to assess and compare collaboration tools by their integration readiness. How to visualize and document the integration workflow, workflows. The basic integration approaches and how to select one. So let's dive right into it. Mahesh, here's my first question for you. When you talk about integrating systems of record and collaboration tools, what systems of record are we talking about here? And uh, you need to unmute yourself, Mahesh. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. No, please. Yeah, so let's start with the uh, most commonly used systems of record. Uh, they are human resource information system, like known as HRIS, uh, applicant tracking systems, commonly known as ATS, and learning management systems, also known as LMS. Um, and by design, uh, essentially, they are catering to different uh, needs of employees across the uh, life cycle of those employees in the organization. Uh, for example, ATS platforms are used for supporting organizations in their hiring processes. Uh, even some of the modern day uh, ATS platforms offer not just uh, uh, I, uh, pro the support for hiring activities, but some of the pre-hiring activities as well. And moving on to the HRIS, these platforms are used as primary HR software, where they would offer typically a suite of modules, um, starting from onboarding to core HR, to performance management, succession planning, and so on. Um, some of the HRIS platform even provide additional modules like ATSS or employee engagement and so on. So, um, and then coming to the LMS, uh, they are primarily there to take care of the training needs of the employees. And again, based on the size and the need of the organization, there may be uh, sort of uh, independent platforms or uh, to call them systems of record in terms of onboarding, employee benefits, uh, payroll, and so on. So I think that, that's what is essentially systems of records are. And the, the other side, as, as we started, uh, I would also take, like to kind of take a quick look at some of the collaboration tools that are available in the current situation. Um, rather, uh, let's take, let's do that through a quick poll. And uh, I think I would like to uh, request Rohan, uh, if he can bring up the first poll questions for the audience, please. Sure, I'll just do that. So there you go. Yeah. So the question is like, uh, which collaboration tools are being used most either by you or within your organization? And I think feel free to choose the options uh, uh, based on your experience so far. All right, so we have polling started. We have responses coming in. Let's give it another 10 seconds. All right, I think we could just cut the results. So yep, we have about 40% uh, of people are using MS Teams, then option A is about 30%, which is uh, for, yep. So MS Teams is, is the main uh, tool used for collaboration, it seems. 
thank you rohan so yeah i mean looking at the features uh, can we get get to the next slide please Yeah, so I think looking at the features offered by these tools and the current COVID situation, yeah, I think most of us are using these tools for meetings or interactions with our colleagues and customers. And as, as finding from our polls are also indicating that collaboration tools that are like enabling this remote work environment are sort of very much in demand. So um, Mahesh, you talked about uh, the different systems of record on one hand and these uh, various collaboration tools on the other. What could be a use case where you integrate a system of record with a collaboration tool? Can you give us an example? Yes. So again, I mean, there has been multiple use cases where we have already started integrating these collaboration tools with our custom, like our customers' HR products. But I would like to take, I think, one of the examples that you talked in the beginning about um, the whole uh, training aspect. So let's take a closer look at an example of enabling these uh, remote learning uh, requirements by means of um, virtual classrooms. So let me share a scenario first. Uh, so Ron, let's get to the next slide, please. Yeah. So in the current situation, uh, like any conven like conventional LMS, uh, that is a learning management system, uh, need to have a video conferencing capabilities. And why so? Uh, because classroom training or the instructor-led training called as L ILT is still one of the preferred mode by many organizations. They already had plans for those. They want to continue. And that's one of the preferred way again, right? So rather than waiting for LMS vendor to now come up with those capabilities in coming months, uh, trainers want to deliver those trainings right away. And that's why trainers have now started using web meeting tools to bridge this particular gap. Um, this happened because most of the organizations have subscriptions for both LMS and web meeting tools. And given current situation, it was like not, I mean, it was not cost effective option to look for an um, additional learning tool that has abilities to deliver ILT. Well, I think this sounds very really right. But again, uh, this also resulted into some additional uh, manual work for the trainer um, before the sessions as well as after the sessions. How, let's understand what needs to be done before the session now. So trainer needs to update the LMS with those session details, uh, training calendars and so on. That's very much usual stuff that they used to do. But now uh, they also need to create web meetings um, and then sort of make sure the invites are sent to the learners. Uh, same details need to appear into the LMS um, as a part of the pre-session prep. So far so good. Now when the session is done, uh, trainer have few more manual steps to perform. Um, like update the LMS, update the session recording back into the LMS, record the attendance, take the session feedback, and so on. And if there was any kind of, let's say, interaction uh, that was that happened with learners, say, um, in terms of the questions and answers or the polls that were sort of conducted, all that information needs to be fed into the LMS manually. Now, because all of this needs to be done manually. The primary reason for that is the web meeting tool that they are using and the LMS, they are like independent platforms. And that sort of brings some questions into the minds of trainers as well. Like, is there a way to save this manual effort? Can this be automated? If this can be automated, then what are those, what, what will it take really to automate it? And the question here would be, let's say you have Cornerstone on demand uh, LMS, and if you have WebEx, right? Um, how do you assess the feasibility of such integration? You know, is it even possible and to what extent, at what depth? Yeah, that's a great question because, because I think assessing it is important thing. And let me give you a framework to assess the feasibility of integration. I mean, I think that will take care of most of the aspects here. Okay. Um, so uh, let's consider it like the training scenario to discuss this framework again. So in this case, we have a need of integrating LMS with a meeting tool or a web meeting tool. Uh, say we want to sort of uh, assess how ready a web meeting tool is for an integration. And like, again, for these integrations, different tools make use of different integration approaches. Uh, wait, Rahul, I think we'll, LL, let's, yeah. So uh, let's start with the first option, uh, which is a marketplace-based integration. Uh, in this approach, a web meeting tool will have a marketplace uh, of apps to provide required integration. Uh, so the integration between web meeting and the LMS will be achieved using this marketplace app. 
uh, organization admins for LMS and web meeting tool will have to enable this integration and end users like both trainers and learners will be able to use both the tools seamlessly. Now, who will make such uh, apps available into the marketplace? Essentially, it's either a web meeting uh, vendor or a LMS vendor who has to create these apps and publish them into the respective marketplaces. Cool. That's how the marketplace option works. Now, let's move on to the next approach, which is using uh, SDKs. Uh, they, are, they are also called as software development kits. Uh, as name suggests, this mechanism is like very much there in case you want to do the integration at application level. What I mean by an application level, say your, this LMS of yours has a mobile app and the requirement is that your learners should not be leaving this app and the, 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 the virtual training that you want to deliver, they should be able to consume it right through the mobile app. Now that's where the, uh, the tools like web meeting provider would provide those integration SDKs for mobile platforms um, like iOS, Android, and some may even give you support for the web SDKs as well. So you can bring in the, um, the external third party tool like we're meeting right into your own application. Then comes the third approach where it's making use of the rest APIs and the event subscription model. In my opinion, I think this is the most uh, preferred and used approach when it comes to the integration. Uh, mapping it to the LMS scenario, both LMS and uh, web meeting need to provide APIs uh, which can be used um, to access different data elements um, from these platforms. Now, uh, API will provide ability to uh, read and make necessary updates to these data elements in the background. Uh, for example, again, the web meeting API can be used by LMS to create a, a meeting event whenever there's a new virtual session in the training calendar. So that's how the essentially APIs and events would work. And the last approach is uh, sort of making use of the custom apps and UI integration. Uh, this approach, uh, essentially one can create uh, apps which will be part of the tools like web meeting or team collaboration tools like MS Teams and so on. Um, now, like with, with this premise, now let's look at like how some of the tools that we look through the polls are supporting these mechanisms. And again, I will not sort of go through this table like line by line, but let's summarize it. So uh, most of the collaboration tools, if you see, have support for REST API based integration. So like there are the row number four from the top or the fifth from the top as all is if you look at them closely. And then the most of those tools also have support for SDK marketplace and custom app based integration. The UI integration, if you see, it's not probably the most like the, the preferred mechanism of integration. So in a way, I think these tools are very much equipped and are able to sort of integrate with other tools uh, in, the, in the whole ecosystem. So um, um, just to sort of uh, clarify, once, once you are ready, um, say for example, in, in our example, let's say we were trying to do Slack integration uh, with a um, SABA learning management system, uh, you would look up here and say, all right, you know, REST APIs are supported and you might use that approach, right? So at this point, you just go ahead and build the integration, right? You sort of plan your integration, lay it out. Yes, and I think let's, let's look at that with using our example, which is um, about integrating LMS with web meeting just to keep the context and uh, the scenario. So uh, if we go to the next slide, Ron. Yeah. So here I'm considering Zoom as an option for web meeting and didn't pick any specific LMS, but we can assume that both um, LMS and Zoom is what we're trying to integrate using REST API and uh, subscription or the event subscription approach. And there's some other key elements that we can see on the screen are like learners, trainers, uh, LMS, and a uh, connector. So I start with the first step, which is to sort of uh, trainer would start setting up the, the training calendar in the uh, LMS. So as these actions are taken in the LMS, um, LMS will publish those uh, sort of events about new sessions getting added. Now connector here will receive such events and uh, um, sort of act upon it. So if there's a new virtual session added, connector will call API from Zoom to create a web meeting or a webinar event. Now let's just call either a web meeting or a web a webinar event as a Zoom event. So on creation of these Zoom events, connector will also get um, learners who needs to be part of those sessions. So those details will be pulled from the LMS and uh, can, would be added under respective uh, Zoom event using another API call. Uh, as a next step, again, connector needs to update the 
the respective Zoom event details in terms of the URL and all of that back into the LMS. So it will call another API from LMS and update that information back into the um, LMS. Yeah, one more click. Yeah. And then um, as learners are getting assigned uh, to the Zoom event, uh, Zoom will also automatically send calendar invite to the both learners and the trainer. So if you click Rowan, it will show that uh, workflow as well. One more click, please. Yeah, and no, yes. So uh, like this way, we would be able to sort of take care of all the actions that uh, trainers were doing manually when it came to setting up those sessions. Now let's move on to the next thing, which is essentially about what happens when they start those sessions and after the session part. So as for the schedule, learners and trainers would join those sessions on the Zoom and the trainer would also choose to record the training session and they will conduct it. So the recording will get saved into the Zoom cloud. And then we will make use of the uh, event subscriptions from the Zoom, uh, which connector will keep track of and perform certain action. The first event that connector will receive is about the completion of the Zoom uh, session. Uh, on receiving that event, now connector will be able to update LMS with details such as who attended the session, how long it went, uh, were there any questions and answers uh, raised during the session, bring those back into the LMS and poll results and so on. Uh, next event will be about session recording. Uh, once connector gets update about there's a recording available, it will download it from Zoom and then upload it back into the LMS for the future references. So with this, uh, we're also able to now automate some, some of the post sessions uh, manual steps that were there. So in short, uh, using this API integration, we could easily integrate Zoom with the LMS once we had all the details with us. And like as, as we went through this process, I brought in one more component that was not there before, which I'm calling it as an integration connector. So I think let's take a look at that more closely, what exactly I mean by an integration connector, because if you see that sort of is what is enabling this whole automation that we were talking about. So uh, Ron, if we go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so as you can see on the screen, um, there are four primary approaches for building such integration connectors. Uh, first approach is uh, a custom connector uh, or a point to point connector. As the name suggests, it's primarily to achieve one-to-one -one connections between different platforms. Uh, it makes use of public APIs, which I was referring to as a REST APIs before, uh, or even file-based data transfer is also possible for this integration. And because it's based on the APIs, we can very well also leverage standards like HR Open uh, in this process. Our next approach is make use of the ready connectors from providers like MuleSoft. Now this approach is primarily used if you already have subscriptions for these sort of platforms. Um, now, then comes the, the enterprise service bus approach, which is, uh, again, there are providers like WSO2 or Mule ESB, and it's primarily used when you have integra integration requirements for bringing more than two or three platforms together. The another commonly used approach is microservices and serverless architecture, which you see as the last line. Again, this is the most latest one, I would say, and is driven more by like um, how your platform architecture is. Um, with this, I think let's let's take a quick pause and get a quick feedback on like which connector approach you think is prob probably most used when it comes to integrating these collaboration tools with uh, systems of records. So can we get to the next poll, please? Sure, my I'm just launching it. Yeah. So the question is like uh, based on your need, um, which approach you are most likely to prefer for integrating these collaboration tools with uh, systems of records. Okay, we have responses coming in. Let's take another 10 seconds. All right, so uh, looks like P2P is the most uh, preferred option here, Mahesh, and uh, the responses indicate uh, the P2P approach. That's great. I think uh, this is very much in line with our observation too, because we have been using P2P um, approach 
<clears throat> I think in most of our work that we are doing for integrating collaboration tools with, uh, with different platforms. So let's take a quick look at what the P2P approach is all about. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Yeah. So as name, again, as name suggests, it's bringing two different platforms together by means of this connector. And on your screen, you can see a diagram depicting product you wish to integrate on the left hand side and the collaboration tool on the right hand side. Uh, connector between uh, the connection between this connector uh, and either of the platforms will be achieved using underlying APIs. Uh, the connector is responsible for essentially transferring data, uh, transforming data received from uh, one platform into the format uh, the other platform understands. Uh, essentially, this is acting as a middleware where you are transferring data from one side to the other and back and forth and so on. Um, the connector would initiate this data transfer using two mechanisms. One is predefined schedule and frequency, which is essentially we call it a scheduler based approach and the triggers, which are the events that are triggered by these platforms, which can lead to initiate certain workflows within the connector. And that's where it will make use of the APIs and primarily two types of APIs in terms of gate API calls, where they are primarily to fetch the the information from the systems like getting employee records from HRIS or applicant details from the ATS or training details from the LMS and so on. The post API calls are used to sort of create or update records into the platform, like creating a Zoom uh, meeting into the Zoom tool and so on. So overall, the best thing about this P2P uh, approach is that it's quick. I mean, it's quick to implement and it can be uh, used to integrate more than one tool incrementally. So you don't need to have everything in place right from the word go. You can keep adding more and more tools uh, in the process. Um, I think with this, we have now uh, covered most of the technical elements that are there required for the integration of collaboration tools with the different uh, systems of records. Uh, being said that, I think there are uh, additional areas from business side, which needs a deeper evaluation and analysis for such integration. So if you only go to the next slide, please. Um, so if you wish to integrate your uh, specific HR platform or set of HR products with different collaboration tools, I think we'd like to connect and explore it further. And I think we'll be able to do it in or engage in two different ways here, where first is our um, integration consultants can connect with you and help in defining your integration case and a solution. Uh, our consultant will make use of our business case uh, discovery framework, which will ensure that there is a thorough analysis and detailed solution done for your integration needs. And then our technology team can help you uh, develop the integration connector using the most suitable approach that we have looked at uh, in the previous slides. I think with this, uh, I would like to take a pause and open it up for the discussion. Thank you, Mahesh. That was, uh, that was very helpful. And, uh, of course, we'll, we'll uh, watch for questions. Feel free to chat in your questions or uh, use the Q&A um, either way. Um, and while you think about your question, I just had one, one thing I, I was curious about, Mahesh. Uh, uh, the, the four different integration approaches that you shared with us, um, could, you, could you just show us sample use cases uh, where you thought one one was preferred over the other. So we kind of get a sense of which approach to use where. Yeah, so I think uh, P2P, we, we have looked at very closely where yeah, we have two that. systems on each side and we wanted to integrate. Now, if I have to talk about ESB, I would say that there is a requirement for integrating, let's say, more than three systems with each other. And what I mean by each other is, let's say you have a... Uh, uh, MS Teams with you, you have a Zoom with you, and then you have Slack on the other side, and then ATS platform, and then LMS platform. Now you have about five systems that needs to talk to each other. I'm just mm -hmm. hypothetically saying it. You may not need to all bring in all collaboration tools together, but essentially, like the action needs to happen across all five platforms. So right. P2P P might be like a probably it may uh, not work for that approach. So that you might want to go for enterprise service bus, where there is a central authority who is sort of making that data transfer happen and there's a reusability in terms of you connect uh, each individual platform to ESB once and you are done and then ESB will orchestrate all the data transfer mm -hmm. that has to happen between uh, those five platforms you are trying to integrate. Right. Thank you. And when we talk about collaboration tools, um, you, you know, you, you've given us a framework to think about that. 
they could be video conferencing tools or you know channels like slack or uh, you know storage devices like drive or uh, something like jira but beyond these generic categories are there other types of collaborations for example chatbots i mean would you call it a collaboration tool and would that be part of your um, collaboration sort of basket yes absolutely i think that's a very good point that you raised because because the tools that we looked at so far are more for the human to human collaboration mm -hmm. but there is a need to have collaboration with your platforms as well because if you have that kind of collaboration then you are able to bring in the personalization aspect to it take an example of like modern day performance management platforms where you are trying to achieve a continuous performance management or employee engagement now right. raising a sort of a, uh, uh, like a poll survey for like every month it's like same question going to the every employee in the organization and you are trying to collect a feedback but then everybody has different questions over their mind they might have joined organization recently so it doesn't make sense for them to ask a question that happened like a year back in the organization right yeah. so having a chatbot kind of a, a collaboration tool really helps you personalize that experience and ask the right questions to the right employee and really get the real feedback from the mm -hmm. from the uh, organization wide Uh, setting so that's why i think the something like chatbot is very essential to achieve that kind of collaboration yeah in 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 uh, in another part of the company with uh, with another customer um we had an interesting use case where um the customer is a contact center so they provide telephonic call center services and they had to go virtual um everybody had to go home with their laptops and uh and a big source of support in a contact center is people sitting around you and that also gives you engagement and these employees were missing that and that's when we implemented a chatbot solution um for simple support tasks at the point of performance but it also served as a engagement tool because the you know the contact center rep now has literally someone to talk to right even from home So uh Mahesh we have a question from one of our audiences here. Sure. So, when you publish apps to marketplace are you typically looking at exposing some functionality or all of it maybe you can tell us with with an example. Yeah I think uh when it comes to publishing those apps into the marketplace what you need to look at is that what is the most uh like use functionality in your application. um that users can achieve by just not leaving their collaboration application so let's say you have a, uh, a tool that enables you to sort of connect with your employees on day to day basis and like talk to them about like their tasks and like their feedback and things like that so you can very well bring that into the team so that they don't need to really switch to the application which does all this but have a window in the teams itself where they can go and do that that thing quickly so for manager they can tag employees talk to them as if they are talking through the teams or for employees they can go back to manager using the similar mechanism so it definitely it's not the complete tool that you want to bring back into the collaboration uh, platform but it's more like a most common use case where you would want to enable it right within the within the uh, collaboration tool for the ease of use and typically if you go to a zoom marketplace or uh, any of these marketplaces do you who do you find there is there a lot of these hr technology apps apart from the usual suspects right the crms and so on yes absolutely i think um, hr apps has started featuring into these apps so if you go and look at slack even they have a dedicated page and section for hr apps in in their uh, marketplace okay. same goes for zoom and i think we are also seeing something get picking up into the teams as well where we have seen some of the leading lms and engagement uh, vendors getting uh, added to the to the zoom uh, sorry the ms team marketplace recently okay and or are you also seeing point solutions there like let's say an onboarding application or um you know like a employee one on one or mentoring application so these are like they are not entire suites but they are like point solutions uh, do they also tend to implement their marketplace um versions yeah some of them uh, some of them are, are sort of getting into that so i haven't seen like many of the entries there but i think through some of our conversations over the last two or three weeks internally uh, mm -hmm. i think the first step these app these uh, applications are taking is the background integration and then slowly they'll move into the 
uh, into the marketplace model as well. But definitely there is an interest and people see a need of uh, bringing these kind of platforms, connecting them to the collaboration tools as well. Okay, great. Um, so Rohan, how are we doing on time here? So yeah, we, we've just exceeded a little, but would be good. Uh, okay, so. so maybe we can, uh, we can bring this to a close if you can take us to the concluding slide. Um, perhaps you had another example here, right? Okay, yeah. there you go. So, uh, so Mahesh, how would you sort of uh, sum up uh, what message uh, you have for us? So I think uh, the whole uh, premise of collaboration tools is going to be more and more important going forward. So I think all of the HR tech uh, app providers should look at it more closely and we are there to help you sort of evaluate your use cases if it's not sure or if you have doubts, you have questions. So let's reach, reach out and uh, I mean even like though we are on the thank you slide, we would be waiting uh, in case you have any specific questions, we can chat right away after um, this or like you can reach out to us on the, on the details that they are on the screen and we'll be happy to connect and, and sort of help you connect your uh, HR applications with different collaboration tools. Absolutely. And uh, I, I guess both in terms of consulting as well as uh, doing some of the heavy lifting and building those connectors, we, we could help you in, in both formats. And uh, we have a complimentary white paper offer. Why don't you tell us about that a little bit? What's this white paper about? So uh, this white paper sort of extends uh, uh, on, the, on the four approaches that we have looked at. And it okay. helps you sort of decide which one you want to pick for uh, your integration strategy. It goes a little deeper into even P2P approach further. It uh, talks about different components. Those were there on that uh, diagram, which I didn't touch upon in the interest of time. So you'll get all those details through this. Uh, Excellent. Excellent. For those of you who want to make a deep dive, I guess uh, that's, that's coming to you in the email. Wonderful. Okay. I think, uh, yeah, we're good. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you, Mahesh, for your time today. And thank you to all our participants for taking the time out for today's webinar. We hope it was an in insightful session. Uh, we'll arrange for the webinar recording to be sent across to you. Uh, uh, in case you have any follow-up questions, uh, please drop us a line uh, at the email address seeing on screen, which is hsplmkting at harbingergroup.com. And we will be more than happy to answer any questions. So we'll be around here. Uh, just in case you have any questions, you're free to uh, put them in your chat. And uh, wishing you all the best of health. Stay safe and take care. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Enjoyed talking to you. And uh, we are here to help you. <laughs>